welcome. As we continue our journey through the Word of God, today we are looking at 1 Timothy chapter 5 and the last couple of verses, verses uh, 23 through to verse 25 today. Uh, this chapter has been full of advice and instruction from the Apostle Paul to Timothy. The Apostle Paul is about 70. The first and second Timothy are the last two books that he writes. Timothy's about 30 years of age. He's leading the crown jewel church in Ephesus. Paul wants him to get it right, make sure that he understands how to lead the church. So he's given him all this advice, how to take care of widows. Who's a widow, Timothy? How do you take care of them? How do you know whether the church should? How do you take care of accusations against leadership? Uh, what kind of elders should you have? What do you do about young people who have a calling and demonstrate it? How quickly should you put them into a ministerial position? All these things. Then he gets right to the very end of this and he says something very interesting, which reminds us Paul was always very acutely aware of Timothy's personal life. He said, no longer drink only water, Timothy. Use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Now, in the ancient world, there weren't water purification systems like we have now. Most often, water was impure. And it was only pure when it was very cold and directly came out of a cold spring. And then as it started to warm up, then it would become impure and would not be good for people. Timothy probably didn't have a very strong constitution uh, with his stomach. And so whenever he drank water that was impure, he would get sick. Now, the fermentation process in wine uh, actually would start to eliminate some of the harmful things in the water. So Paul says, listen, I understand that you're trying to make a point and, and make sure that people don't get drunk and they understand your example, but it's okay. You can add a little wine to your water for your stomach's sake so you don't get sick as much. Now, of course, in no way, shape or form is he condoning drunkenness. What he's saying here is it was okay for you to use a little bit of wine. So what people would do in the ancient time is they would cut wine. In other words, they would take pure fermented wine add it to water, what that would do is actually help the water be more pure and they wouldn't get sick. So Paul says, use a little wine. Timothy's probably abstaining from alcohol because he's trying to set a good example. But unfortunately, his setting of a good example was actually hurting his health because water that had a little bit of wine in it was safer to drink than water with no wine in it. So Paul says, listen, don't sacrifice for your health for the sake of abstinence, because you will actually end up doing more good for the Lord by taking care of your body in this particular circumstance. Timothy was obviously having a lot of frequent sicknesses. Now, what's interesting here, very interesting observation here. Paul didn't just say, Timothy, I'm praying for you to be healed from these constant infirmities. Uh, he didn't even say, listen, as an apostle, I command this sickness to leave you. He didn't send him a handkerchief that he had prayed over as he did in Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, when he couldn't be with people and he sent a, a handkerchief that he had prayed over. So Paul did not have miraculous powers at his command. What he did have was he had the gift of healing to be used at the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Remember, as Paul had written to the church in Corinth, that the Holy Spirit distributes the gifts individually as he wills. Paul understood the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit better than anybody. But here he gives Timothy some very practical, natural advice. What does that mean? That means the two of them don't contradict each other. We still can believe for spontaneous, miraculous, instantaneous healing. At the same time, say to somebody, go to a doctor. Or make sure you, you need to get your diet better. Your diet's not good. You need, you need some things better for your diet. So I actually think that's a really great observation. Uh, Guzik makes that about healing. If it's God's will for all to be healed right now, then Paul and the Holy Spirit who inspired Paul here led Timothy into sin, calling him to look to a natural remedy instead of divine healing. God uses natural remedies and the work of doctors in healing, as well as the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. They do not contradict each other. So, great observation, very simple, from how Paul spoke to Timothy. 
Then we get to the very last couple of verses here of 1 Timothy chapter 5. Some men's sins are clearly evident, Timothy. What he's about to tell him is, listen, it's hard to see a man's sins and their good works. Some men's sins are clearly evident. They're preceding them to judgment. But those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. It's easy to see struggles and sins that some people have, Timothy. But others, their sins are hidden, and you only see the fruit of them later on. So when you're judging people, and you are working out whether you help them in all these cases, be aware of this, Timothy, that we all have areas in our lives that God is dealing with. Sometimes that area is very easy for other people to see. Sometimes it's totally hidden. Some people are only considered to be very holy because they're very good at hiding their sin. Point Paul's making to Timothy. But whatever has been hidden will be revealed. God, God's good works and, and the good works people do for God will always be revealed. Sins are hidden, but they will be revealed. Even if it's eventually at the judgment seat, they will be revealed. And these words are meant to be a caution to Timothy as he's appointing leaders. Remember this. Think about this. Don't just judge them based on whether they appear holy or not, because they could be sinning and it's going to come out later. What you see on the outside isn't always accurate. So be slow, take it slow, wait for God to give you the discernment of what needs to happen. Some great observations here. Again, just a couple of short verses, but so much content for us to, to digest and say, what does that mean for me? Um, I, I think about you know Timothy trying to be a good example by not drinking alcohol, but he actually needed it in order for his physical condition to be helped. And I, I'm sure that that was difficult for Timothy because Timothy was trying to do the right thing. And then he was probably saying, well, you know, this is just what I have to do. If God's asked me to, to do this, then this is what I have to put up with. And Paul just gives him some very practical, mature advice. He says, listen, just put a little bit of wine with it. You, are, you and I both know, Timothy, you're not meant to get drunk. We've covered that pretty clearly. But you would be best served to serve God by being healthy. You're not being healthy by drinking this impure water. So I think about that, and I think about what that must have been like for Timothy and how he would have navigated that and processed that. I'm sure it wasn't easy because he's a young man trying to do the right thing. I also imagine Timothy would have felt a lot of pressure after reading this particular chapter of like, wow, there's a lot of pressure on me about how to help widows and give them money that belongs to the church and and how do I rebuke somebody and uh, an elder who's done something wrong and then this person's made an accusation against this elder and now I've got to find two or three witnesses. And What if there's only two? Do I have two or three? I don't know how many. And I think about all the burdens that that would have brought to him. But then I think about the Apostle Paul just saying, hey, listen, Timothy, make sure you stay pure and it'll all be easy. Don't let those things, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, well, not easy, but you, you, you won't fall in the same trap as them if you're keeping your life pure which is why those in spiritual leadership in a church have a responsibility to make sure that they don't fall into those traps. And that's me included. And let me tell you, as somebody who lives a life like that, it's not easy because the devil waves those things in your face all day, every day. And if he can get you to fall and trip, then he will get you to fall and trip. It, it never, it's relentless. It never goes away. And so I know that Timothy would have really had to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit and rely on the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do what Timothy, uh, what Paul had uh, challenged him to do leading the church. What do you observe out of all this? Tell me in the comments below. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful letter from Paul to Timothy, just helping us to understand so many practical parts about our lives and leadership in the church and how a church should operate. Thank you, Lord. Let us be the best stewards of anything that you put in our hands. In Jesus' name, amen.